You are listening to the Andrew and Troy Show. Andrew, joining us on the phone is Australia's favourite diver and ukulele player, Matt oh. Mitchum. Matt, welcome to the show. Hello, Andrew and Troy. It's so nice to be on the Andrew and Troy Show. <laughs> oh, if you I mean, yeah. Did I just say Troy? Yeah, 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 yeah that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can keep saying the Andrew and Troy Show. That, so it, it's really odd, uh, Matt, that oddly turns me on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I just got confused because um, I know you by your other character. That's, well, yes. Yes, we met years ago at a, at a Mardi Gras uh, when you just won your gold medal and you were leading the parade and I approached you with, with my other personality, character. my character. <laughs> and um, did I scare the living bejesus out of you? Slightly, yeah, because yeah. um, I, yeah, yeah, and it left a lasting impression. Yeah, because I, I sort of, when I, you know, at the time and when I looked at the video, there was a look on your face that, that sort of went, "What the fuck is going on here? <laughs> Why is this grown man with this shoving this puppet in my face?" <laughs> oh, I was so young and inexperienced. I hadn't seen the world yet. Yes, you opened my eyes. Was I your first puppet? You were. <laughs> And hopefully not your last, Matty. Yeah, I've been cheated on you. Oh, you have? <gasps> Whom with? Oh, Randy. Oh, that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, he's quite good. Although he's a little... No, I'm not going to get into that. We're not here to talk about puppets, Matty. We are here to talk about that you and, mm -hmm. and twists and turns and diving and everything. How did your Mardi Gras season go? Uh, uh, this year, um, yeah, the show went really well. I had five shows at the Seymour Centre. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and that was at the end of a massive run across the country. Like, we had done three shows in Melbourne, two shows in Brisbane. Wow. Seven or eight shows in Perth, and then five shows, um, in Sydney. And that was just in February alone. So, yeah, it was a massive run, um, but it went really, really well. And then I... Have been taking a break for a couple of months to focus on, you know, diving and yep. uni, you yep. know, those things, and um, and then I will pick up the show again in Hobart for the Festival of Voices in July, and then I've got a show in Alice Springs, believe it or not, in wow. August. Wow! Playing at the Red Center. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're going to do a Priscilla type um, reconstruction. Nice. nice. So big f on top of on top of a bus, or yeah, I'm thinking more like one of those um, community kind of little panel vans. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit safer. So, so Maddie, why why a ukulele? Why why not um, a guitar? Um, because a ukulele's only got four strings, whereas a guitar's got six. So it's kind of like. I don't know, uh, 30% easier. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, maybe that we, should, we should ask, like, is that, is that the same with why diving and not swimming? You know, mm, is it... <laughs> very, yeah, true. A couple no. of strings less. No, no, no. I, I don't think anybody would ever uh, say that diving is 30% easier than swimming. <laughs> I, I, well, I, apart from doing bombs, and, and that's, that's about my diving experience. <laughs> and It might be 30% less boring than swimming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true, true, true. It is exciting to watch. It is. It's very. It's also the ukulele is like five hundred percent more portable than a guitar. So that, that, that is was true. the other thing. That is that, very true. Now, to to go on a on a personal story, uh, Maddie used to come around to the place that I was was living, and he I used to wake up to Maddie and my housemate playing and singing downstairs. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so you've been doing ukulele for years? Yeah, yeah. I've been playing the ukulele for five, five or. Six years now. That's about as old as a puppet. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's it like touring? You, you had a massive, massive tour over Mardi Gras, the Mardi Gras period. Do you, is it is it a tough living out of a suitcase, or do you do you, do you love it? Um, well, I'm used to it. I've been doing it for quite a number of years with that old diving thing. Mm. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I love I love traveling around, um, you know, it's new environments. Like, I get bored very quickly and very easily. So, you know, the more I'm shifting around or the more different things I'm doing, um, the less bored and destructive I get. <laughs> that's, 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 that's good. And it, it is good. It's a very good thing. Yeah. Now, back to diving. Why are so many divers gay? Uh, see, now is it something in the water? 
<laughs> no, it's a bad stereotype. Like, until uh, until a couple of, two mm. years ago when Tom came out, I was, like, the only gay in the village. <laughs> uh, and, you know, so it was like this stereotype of all the divers are gay was sadly incorrect. I had no friends up until, like, two years ago. Mm. Did, you, did he steal your thunder? Has Tom Daly stolen your thunder? Um... No, I don't think he'll ever be as gay as me. So <laughs> did you? Because you, you obviously know Tom. Did you? Yes, did yes, you know before he publicly came out? No, I took him at face value. Mm. Like I take anybody who speaks about their sexuality at face value because, yep. you know, if they're saying to everybody that they're not gay mm. and they're not actually interacting with the gay community or doing anything positive for the gay community then they're kind of, uh, effectively, they're not gay. Um, So, um, yeah, I always just kind of take that at face value. And when he did come out, it was as much of a surprise to me as it was to everybody else. I mean, of course, we all had our suspicions, but nobody knew. Mm. So, yeah, I didn't know. Wow. Wow. Uh, So, on on the show, on your show, uh, what's your favourite songs to perform? Hmm. Um, you get double points for if you mention Kylie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do any Kylie songs. I'm so sorry. <laughs> how? Oh, you've just how? That's that's the ungayest thing you possibly could have ever said. I know. You you'll lose your membership. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I'm cutting up my card right now. <laughs> <laughs> Why no Kylie? Um, I don't know. No Kylie songs came up that sort of fit in the story better mm. than any other songs. Um, spinning around, can't get you out of my head. Yeah, look, they're, they're wonderful songs, <laughs> but they're not really storytelling songs, are they? Yeah, true. Because your, your show is based on your book, correct? Yes. Yeah. Um, so it's like, uh, uh, it's my life. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, well, it's uh, Bon Jovi there. <laughs> yes, you, you got it. That it's what an autobiography sort of is, I guess. True. Now, Maddie, let's talk upcoming shows. Where can people catch you? Hobart mm-hmm. in uh, end of sorry, Hobart in the middle of July. Um, so if if um, Ox, uh, the, if the drive home show um, is being listened to in either mm-hmm. Hobart or Alice Springs at the moment, then. Um, check out Festival of Voices or um, or even make it easier for yourself. Just go to twistsandturns.com.au and we've got a list of all the upcoming shows. Beautiful. Maddie Mitchum, thank you so much for joining us here on The Andrew and Troy Show. Thanks for having me, Andrew and Troy. <laughs> the Andrew and Troy Show on OX Gold. And we're going to be driving you home.